everyone, I'm Cheryl and welcome to the Sewing Room channel. I've got a great little gift idea for you and that's this round pot holder. As a gift idea, I've decided to add this little utensil I got at Dollar Tree, one dollar, and I tied it on with this little bow. But without the little bow, let me show you what this does. It has this cute little loop on it so you can hang it, but what this does is you slip your hands in, your thumb in, and then you pinch your pot handles. So like I said, it makes a great gift, especially if you're gonna make two. So this is really a fun project to do. Now let's get started. For this pot holder, you're going to need to select two different fabrics, one light, one dark. So fabric A, you're gonna need two eight inch squares. Fabric B, you're gonna need one eight by 10 inch piece and one eight inch square. Cotton batting, you'll need three eight inch squares. Take one of your eight inch squares for the outside of fabric A and then your other square of fabric B that's eight inches. Lay the pretty side of fabric B down against the table. Then in between, put your two layers of cotton batting and then your other fabric A eight inch square on top and do some quilting stitches. And all I did was one down the middle, I went over a few inches and did one and then did one over here. Then turn it and repeat and do the same thing. Take your other fabric A, eight inch square, and you're gonna just cut it in half, which would be at four inches would be the center. So go ahead and just cut it right down the middle. And take a square of your cotton batting and do the same thing. So you wanna put your cotton batting underneath. And then you wanna do some quilting stitches on this too. So what I did was I went right down the center going this way. And then I did about, oh, I think four rows going the other way. So you wanna do that on both of your pieces. Then you wanna take uh, your other square that is eight by 10 and you wanna cut it in half so that it is eight by five. Then take it and bring it pretty side down on top. So here's my pretty side, it's usually a little darker. And line it up on one edge. Then you're going to stitch a one quarter inch seam all along that edge. So at your ironing board, you wanna press this seam on the back. Then you wanna fold it over like this and push against the seam and press it. Then you're gonna wrap this piece of fabric over the edge and then press it again. So you wanna do this on both of your pieces. And this is the center section of the pot holder. You might have a little bit of fabric hanging out over here on the edges. Just go ahead and just trim that off, make it, making it even with the fabric on top. Now take a bowl. My bowl is about seven and a half inches across in diameter. So I'm gonna place it down on top. And then you can take either a, a marking pin or a pencil, a regular pin, and just draw around it. And then cut on your drawn lines. Take your smaller pieces and place them together. And line them up. Then take your other piece that you just trimmed into a circle, place it on top, and trace around it with either a marking pin pin, and then cut on those drawn lines. Now take your full circle and place to where your lining fabric, your fabric B, is facing up. Take your two half squares and bring them in like this. And line them up on the edges. Now on one end, I kinda like to just open it just a little bit so there's maybe a half an inch of space. 
And so when you go to use them, that is, it's easier for you to get your fingers in there. So I would pin this and then do a basting stitch close to the edge all the way around. Because I offset this one edge down here, you're going to find that you, you might have a little bit of your fabric sticking out beyond the edges of your circle on the bottom. So I would suggest you would just go ahead and just trim any of those areas that are sticking out. To bind the edges of this pot holder, I'm going to use bias tape that is extra wide, double fold. This is real important you get the right size. When you're looking at your bias tape, you'll know, notice that one edge is not all the way over to the other edge. So whatever edge is like that is the one that's going to go on top of your pot holder. So open this up, and this is the wider edge right here, and open it up again. Now turn the pot holder over to the back because you're going to place this right up here in the center. And, but place it just a little ways past center. Okay, just a little bit. And I would place a pin there to hold. And you're going to stitch this all the way around the edge and you're going to do a one quarter inch seam. And when you get to right about here, inch and a half away or so, stop and take it out of your machine. Now turn it over to the front and pull your bias tape up and over around. Now this place where you first started, right here, pull that up and pull it past your little stitch line and put a little pin in there to hold it, if you, if you can get it in there, okay. Now another suggestion I have that you do is before you uh, stitch this final edge of the bias tape down, you may want to take some small scissors and do little clips around your edges because sometimes the edges have a tendency to curl up a little bit when they're round. So if you have rag shears, these go through all of that cotton batting. Otherwise, you'll probably have to do a few little layers at a time. So after you've got this pinned down just a little bit in a few places, just kind of help. Take this piece and turn it back over and you're going to finish stitching it down and you're going to go right past this edge here of the bias tape, all about a quarter inch. Now stitch close to this edge right along here and stitch all the way around and when you get towards the point where you started, you want to fold this bias tape over this starting edge here and stitch it over to the middle, right in between these two pieces here. And once you do that, I'll show you what to do next. So once I got past this point here, because my bias, end of my bias tape that's underneath is right over here. So I stitched past it. Then I left my needle down through all the fabric layers, lifted up my presser foot, and turned it to where I could begin stitching up over the top. Keep your bias tape folded together. Stitch all the way down to the end. And then you can back stitch across here a couple of times. Then take the end and turn it to where it goes under. Now you can make this any length you want. I cut my end about four inches. You can make it anything you want. And I'm going to stick it right back beyond there so it looks like it's crisscrossed in the back. And then turn it over and I would put a little pin there to hold it. After you get it pinned, turn it back over to the front 
and stitch back and forth here a few times. And I like to stitch a little square pattern. So I'll stitch up across here, across the top, and back down and across. So it really holds it in this little position like you see it. And then you're all done. And I have one more suggestion for you. This is a little gift idea for you. I often, with either my decorative towels or my pot holders or oven mitts, I'll attach a little utensil. So you could take some ribbon, and I've cut mine about 24 inches long. You can cut it in length you like. And just with a needle and thread, just do a real loose hand stitch so that they can easily take it off with a pair of scissors. So you could just do a little looping stitch right there, in and out, in and out, and then take this and lay it on top, and then tie a little bow around it. This is such a pretty little pot holder. You could make a set or make one to go with a regular oven mitt. You can even attach it to a kitchen towel put a little utensil on it. This was a Dollar Tree, one dollar, and they had them in different colors. So I thought it was a great gift idea. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in other sewing projects that you could make as gifts for Christmas or any time of the year, make sure you check below your YouTube screen for those video links. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and make sure you go and check out my Facebook page. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time and happy sewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click on the thumbs up button and don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. If you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the bell so you can receive notifications about my latest videos. I'm Cheryl and this is Scotty and this is Manny. See you next time and happy sewing.